wants another child. Who are the claimants? Call Mr. and Mrs. Lineker. Mr. and Mrs. Lineker. I, it's on a football theme. I'm very much hoping this Gary Lineker's parents are coming up. Oh, yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> Raise your right hands. Say after me. I swear that the evidence I shall give. I swear, I swear that, that the evidence, evidence I shall, shall give shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. Be the, the truth, whole truth. The whole truth, truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing, nothing but, but the, the truth, truth. In accordance with the ancient Flitch law. In, in accordance with, with the ancient Flitch law. law. That's it. In this trial, who appears for the claimants? Uh, my lord, I appear for the claimants. And my learned friend, Miss Sadie Nine. With me. And Miss Sadie Nine, you are on a yellow card. <laughs> 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 and who appears for the bacon? I appear for the donors of the bacon, my lord, with my learned friend Tim Clark, KFC. Sorry, uh, KFC. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Daniels. Yes, thank you, my lord. Um, Mrs. and Mrs. Lineker, um, although it's not Lineker you use, is it? No. no. Can you perhaps introduce yourselves? Uh, for you. I'm Amanda Rayner. And I'm Colin Maitland. Now, we're going to start with you, Amanda, because you are related to Flitch royalty. Is that fair? We're not I'd related. I'd like to think so. So, Amanda, tell me this. Um, who was your mum and dad? My late parents, um, Des and Claire Rayner. Oh. Thank you. Now, if, if your lordship permits, I have a couple of exhibits, and I'll just get um, Amanda to verify these. Is that your parents? That, those are my parents. And your parents in this photograph were doing what we do. They were the counsel in the Flitz trials. Absolutely, yes. Probably doing it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> I've only won one. Come on, members of the jury, come on. Um, and this is also your parents. My parents and his in-laws. And on this occasion, they weren't counsel, were they? They were not. They were claimants. They were claimants. Fabulous. And as claimants, did they win? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Colin, on to you. Uh, Colin, your parents... Uh, were also on the stage. They were indeed. They were uh, um, a, a comedy double act, if you like, and uh, toured. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, uh, and earned uh, their livings on the uh, Variety Theatre for many, many years before emigrating to the uh, to North America. Fabulous. And and you, as an actor, little bird, told me. In fact, it was you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, told me. Um, you were not only in the Dirty Dozen, but you were one of the Dirty Dozen. I was indeed, yeah. I was, uh, I was probably the least significant of the <laughs> Dirty Dozen, I think. I, I occasionally got to mumble a few words or shout something indistinguishable, but uh, other than that, I, I didn't have a big part, but I was there and I was one of the dozen. Fabulous. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the, the later. Dirty, dirty Dozen is a, a film, is it, rather than the jury? It's like a TikTok, but much longer. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and to take a further step up, I think you were the voice of God as well. Uh, on occasion, yes. Uh, um, generally working for my wife here. <laughs> See, the pay is lousy, but the home comforts are wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> 
And like, uh, yeah, when she has uh, uh, um, arranged or produced uh, an event, I have been the voice of God that is never seen but only heard afterwards, only heard during the course of the, uh, of the event. And he does get paid. <laughs> if you can call it that, yes. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, uh, tell us a little bit about the how you two met. We were set up on a blind date. Uh, we were meant to be going to the theatre with neutral friends who suddenly decided they couldn't make it. And um, I'm not saying our friends are fear, you know, induce fear, uh, but they do. And um, independently, we both decided we should probably go ahead with the date because we'd never hear the end of it. Absolutely. And we're very glad we did. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> and um, just to, to, to put the cherry on the very top of that particular cake, um, you um, got engaged in a particularly romantic way. Can you, can you help us with that? <coughs> well, this would be um, <coughs> several years ago. And uh, I, had, uh, I had a medical condition with my heart and was having problems. And they said, no, we've got to rush you into hospital and you're going to have a bypass. So uh, this is all in the space of a very few days. So um, I went into a hospital and had a triple heart bypass. And I was, uh, I, I came out, eventually came to, as they say, uh, down in the recovery room. This would be about two o'clock in the morning, I think, with a grand, damn great tube sticking down my throat and a machine still breathing for me. And um, to, First good news was I was still alive, but I couldn't tell any more than that. And uh, I, next morning, Amanda came to see me and was uh, uh, very glad, I hope, <laughs> yeah, to, uh, to see that uh, kind of. I, wa I was alive. <laughs> I've got to give the, something away here. You, yep. you can never forgive me for this. But Amanda had always been slightly more keen on marriage than I was. I was a sort of determined anti-marriage person. And Amanda had proposed to me on several occasions, <laughs> usually in leap years, and I'd always managed to find some excuse to say no. And um, Can I, I point out that we did have a shared mortgage and we're living together at that point, so it's probably yeah. just as binding. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> looking back, I can't quite see what, what my point was and all that, but never mind. Uh, so I finally woke up and they took the took the tube out from my throat and they switched the machine off and I was able to breathe properly and there was Amanda standing right next to me and a hand in mine. And for some reason, I've always claimed that I was still slightly delirious from the, uh, <laughs> from the drugs. I, I, I just said to her, look, uh, when I get out of this, when I get out of this, what the hell? Do you want to get married? And she looked at me and said, my precise words were, as I collapsed into uh, an NHS plastic chair, you bugger. <laughs> and then I turned and looked at the nurse at the bottom of the bed, and I said, you're a witness. Mm. That was a yes, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, uh, Amanda, was that before or after you checked the life insurance policy? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to. I knew I wanted to marry him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, you have um, one wonderful daughter together. We do. Aged 18. What's her name? It's Stephanie. And um, before uh, you had Stephanie, um, you had some difficulties um, with that? Well, in fact, um, we had a lot of difficulties, and Stephanie is, in fact, adopted. But it wasn't an, an easy pass, was it? It certainly wasn't. Um, we had um, <laughs> treatment, yep, the IVF, uh, the IVF and, uh, which went on for a long time. And uh, one of my, my most, uh, uh, st well, strong <laughs> memories of all this is that uh, one had to go along with the medical advice if you wanted to achieve pregnancy. And Keep it so clean. On. Yeah, well, I'm, do I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, I was at, uh, I can remember the times that I was working with the BBC at the time for the World Service, and occasionally you had to do night shifts, which I always hated. And so I would come home for about 7 o'clock in the morning for, after doing a 12-hour night shift broadcasting, 
tired and absolutely, uh, you know, almost uh, completely zonked is the most accurate word I can think of. And I'd come in the house and there would be Amanda at the top of the stairs. <laughs> With a thermometer, with, with a thermometer, a thermometer she'd be saying, call now. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> I cannot describe to you my lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> but well. she, she, she had the perfect answer. She always used to say, it's all right, Cole. You lie there and I'll do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colin. I, I, I now have the uh, definitive de uh, definition of too much information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you share a lot of hobbies together. Um, you share a, a, a love of the ice, I understand. Yes, yes. I think you'd say that. Cool. Yes. Um, I love watching and photographing figure skating. And I've briefly spent a lot of my time lying flat on the ice with a camera in my hands, taking photographs. And I, I love ice for uh, ice hockey. And I spent a lot of my time lying flat on the ice, having been flattened by somebody <laughs> else from the other team. Uh, but we both agree that one way we can agree, ice is best in a whiskey. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. you, um, you like antique fairs? And you've uh, bought some unusual things along the way? We have. Just tell us a little bit about that. You have a fuel pump somewhere. Uh, well, well, yes, in our living room is, stands a 1934 uh, full-size fuel pump, um, which we, we bought on a whim and had it transported down from Yorkshire and then spent the next six weeks getting all the horrible works out of workings out of it, all the gubbins that, yeah. that, that pumped the fuel and cleaning it off of generations of old diesel oil and, and we, everything else. we did else. it together. We did it together. And uh, then we hauled the damn thing into the house and put shells in it, and it now contains all our um, alcohol. A different type of fuel. Uh, um, yeah. uh, Colin, um, in terms of pumping that, do you do that yourself, or do you let, um, do you let Amanda do it? <laughs> we, we share all such of these. Uh, I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful. Um, OK. Um, one of the things, Amanda, um, that you like in the morning is a cup of tea. Uh, yeah. And who brings you that? Colin, of course. Uh, and does he do that come what may? Absolutely. Well, yes. Uh, I can remember when uh, uh, I, uh, I'm a tea person in the morning. Amanda tends not to drink well, herbal tea, something like it's that. It's still tea. tea. And it was our, my habit to take her up a cup of tea in the morning. Uh, and uh, I had um, fallen over taking our daughter to school on the, on a, in the middle of winter on an icy tree root and fractured my ankle and dislocated it. So uh, I was eventually allowed home in a cast and so on. And I thought, well, that, there goes that. But I thought, no, I'm not going to be defeated. So I found a way of putting a cup of tea on the tray for her and pushing it upstairs, walking up on my knees, and then shuffling on my knees round to her bed and handing her the cup of yeah. tea. I mean, I, 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 the door opened and I looked and in came Colin. And all I could see was half of him bobbing along. <laughs> and he didn't say a word. He just sort of put the tea down um, next to me and bobbed along and went out again. <laughs> Not a word was spoken, but I got my cuppa. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, Amanda, finally, we talk a little bit about holidays. Um, you like to have your holidays organised for you, I understand. Whereas Colin's approach is that he likes to, to do it himself. He tends to freestyle, yeah. <laughs> freestyle. And how has that worked out for you? Well... San Francisco. <laughs> yes, I, uh, one memory there is that we were in San Francisco. We'd never been to the city before. And uh, um, I, uh, Amanda said, no, we've got to book a hotel ahead of time. So I said, no, 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 you don't. You just get to, get to the airport and take a look. They've got lists of hotels and pick one in the right spot. And just go on down, book it and go in. She said, oh, all right, uh, on your head be it. Well, we booked what seemed like a perfectly reasonable hotel in the center of San Francisco and went and uh, 
uh, went in, and it was strange slightly that the lady behind the desk had, was wearing saffron robes, yes. which we thought was a bit odd, but never mind. And she said, now, the room, I'm afraid, is on the seventh floor. And we said, well, that's all right. They take the lift. She said, well, no, the elevators are out of action at the moment. Ah, okay, it was too late then, so we took our luggage up, put it in the room, which seemed perfectly all right, went out, had dinner, came back, went upstairs, went and to went to bed. Over to you. Um, <laughs> having said, you know, we'll do it your way, on your head be it, we woke up in the middle of the night, and it was on his head, and on the floor, and across the bed, on top of... The mice were everywhere. <laughs> dozens and dozens of mice. I've Ooh. never seen no, anything it like it. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And, and did you subsequently find out why there were so many? We there? did. We went down the next morning and said, well, we're leaving. I mean, we, we can't have that. So, I mean, all the mice. She said, I'm really sorry about that. She <laughs> said, you see, we're, we're cleaning the top upper floors, over, overhauling them, refurbishing them, and all the mice, of course, escape downwards and uh, go to the lower floors. We said, well, why don't you just kill the mice? She said, well, we can't because we're the Northern California Buddhist Association, <laughs> and we don't believe in killing any of God's creatures. <laughs> So the mice just have to, you just have to live with them. We thought, mm, no. Well, we <laughs> live somewhere else after that. Yes, and when we then went a couple of blocks down, found another hotel, and Colin sort of said, well, you'll never guess what happened. And she said, oh, you've just come from the hotel up the road. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah trust me, we don't have mice, we don't have roaches, we don't have anything. Oh, thank God. Goodness. <laughs> and, and Colin and Amanda, how long have you been married now? Nearly 18 years. Uh, and what has it been like? It's been fun. Yes. Literally fun. We, have. We, we, we If we can't laugh somewhere in the day, we know there's something very wrong. And sometimes at each other, because we have our own foibles, and I'm sure And we, at ourselves. Yeah. yeah. We, we, I mean, even through the whole fertility thing, don't worry, I'm not going to give you too much more information. We found, after the most grueling days, and some of them are grueling, um, we still would end up giggling over something so ridiculous and so silly as part of the process. Um, some people, you hear of it, you know, that sort of thing pushing them apart, but it didn't, did it? We no. just, we were in it together. Yep, and uh, uh, I certainly never regretted it. Good, me neither. Oh. <laughs> uh, Amanda, Colin, thank you very much. There'll be some more questions. Ms. Doe. Okay, Amanda and Colin, I'd like to hear more about the voice of God, uh, which I'm sure the bishop would also like to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you give us a demonstration, please? Well, I'd... Uh, Do I cue you in? Well, yes, yeah, so okay. by all means. I'm an event manager. I produce award ceremonies and conferences, and as Colin says, he's my voice of God. So I'm on headphones, he's on headphones, the whole crew are on headphones, as indeed are our uh, crew at the back there. And I would say, right, stand by, and voice of God, you're live in three, two, one, go voice of God. And I would say something like, ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand to the winners of the Barbecue of the Year Association, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Blankensop of Lower Halstead, or something like that, uh, uh, more pretentious perhaps than that. I'm not seen, they just hear the voice. And as long as you enunciate carefully and make sure that you don't hit the mic <laughs> and, and make sure that uh, you could pronounce the winners' names correctly. Nothing offends people more than having their names wrongly pronounced. Um, that's about it. That's cool. It's a, it's a slang term, voice of God. A fog. Yeah. Very good. I mean, I myself am the voice of Nizaral, uh, the voice of Dandruff on Spotify. <laughs> um, so I can tell that that is lovely stuff. Um, it says here in the statement that you like jazz. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> How do you know when to clap? <laughs> I, I, I try to do it on the first and third beats. 
you, you clap on one and three. One and three. Monsters. <laughs> Everybody knows that you clap on two and four. Uh, that's old fashioned. Everyone, don't give them the bacon. <laughs> so, um, it says here that you, uh, well, you told us that you pr proposed under anaesthetic. You, you can't remember it, but you don't regret it. Um, that's how I feel about Glastonbury, not marriage. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, I, it says in the notes that you have a £35 dog. Fine if it's a Great Dane, less fine if it's a Chihuahua. So, uh, please tell us about your dog. We have two. Oh, we have 17 two. and a half each or no, minus 13? Uh, the, the big one is what's known as a Scholly. He is a German Shepherd cross with a Border Collie. Um, and this is, I think, we did this together. We got it wrong because our darling daughter at the age of 12 mm. said, I want a dog. And we forgot to say no. And then <laughs> two years later, she said it again. And what did we say? Yes. We said yes. <laughs> so we now have these two dogs. And we, we should have known the, uh, the, the Sholly was going to be the monster that he's become because we saw him uh, as a, a uh, seven-week-old puppy on the farm. And he already had paws, which were about that size. And logic it, it indicated that he was going to be huge, which he's turned out to be. Yeah. But, uh, well, our daughter loves him. And uh, God, what so else can we, we do? Really, don't well, we? I suppose we do. <laughs> but we agree on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose the big question, given the size of the dog, um, would you share the prize? with the dog. I don't think we'd have any choice. <laughs> I think he would make his own yeah, mind up about yeah, that. Yeah, he'd have it before we got it. So on to, on to the meat and your suitability for this quantity of meat. That's my, that's my main issue, really. Um, you're a similar age to my in-laws, and my father-in-law <laughs> can disappear to the toilet for an hour after a cooked breakfast. Um, so I'm just wondering how you plan to handle a flitch of bacon. Very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> very, very carefully, I would say. <laughs> We'd use it as an excuse to have a party. Yeah. You're all invited. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not telling you where the party is. <laughs> I have the address. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would probably you know, use it. We would probably would have a party. Oh, we would. Um, and show it round with our friends. It would uh, it'd be great. We'd yeah. love it. Okay, well, thus endeth my questions. Thank you. There we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Ms. Stone, we heard earlier from Ms. Nine, Hey Dougie the Musical, mm -hmm. is that anything to do with you? Yes, I, I wrote it. And are there, and are there any uh, songs from Hey Dougie the Musical? Yeah. Any, anyone um, would know? Yeah, there are. I mean, there's, there's, there's a song. I didn't write the song, but I, I, I wrote the, the script for the, uh, for the musical. Um, the lyrics are quite tricky, but the song that did get to number one um, goes like this. Stick, 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 sticky, sticky, stick, stick. Number one. <laughs> Mr. Clark? Uh, my lord, my lord, my lord. Further intelligence, I'm afraid. I've been, <laughs> been liaising <laughs> with Essex. Over here, sir. Yes? I was deep undercover trying to find this person. And my colleague is deep undercover over on the other side there, and Adam. Um, we've had intelligence that there is somebody in here that's purporting to be the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner <laughs> with a view to nobbling the jury uh, to increase the crime convictions. <laughs> <laughs> As a result, the Metropolitan Police, finest police service in the world, their surveillance operatives have been in the room and we believe we've identified the culprit. Fool of a man. I mean, a commissioner wouldn't even know what a court is, let alone where to find <laughs> it. Yeah. But anyway, we believe that the members of the audience may be able to help us. So if there's anybody in the audience that can see anything that may have tagged this individual, please put your hand up. 
Please don't be frightened. We'll get you witness protection. <laughs> we may just point you to perhaps the back of a chair. Anybody notice anything? Is that you, sir? Ah, what have you found, sir? What have you found? Could you read it? I've met the Met sticker. Fantastic. <laughs> you can rely on the Met to catch a crook, unlike these Essex chaps. What? So, ah, there he is. Now, hold on. This, this there, there was a surveillance photograph taken earlier, and I believe it's, I believe it's the same gentleman. Well, this is Mr Hurst, the, uh, the commissioner. No, it can't be. It's an imposter, surely. That's ridiculous. Got, would, would you please leave my court? Well, this, <laughs> this was intelligence from the Essex Constabulary. Well, there we are. Right. Well, he's obviously got, <laughs> he's obviously got a lot of work to do Mr. still, Mr. hasn't he, having been re-elected? <laughs> Mr. Clark, I do apologise. That's all right. Um, members of the jury, we appreciate on this side, that the sympathy and affection of the jury and the crowd may temporarily be with the claimants. And so I've decided that the most strategic approach I can make is to be rude about my learned friend Ian Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's questioning clearly was an appeal to local prejudice and an appeal to a rose-tinted view of history. Uh, just because that worked for Kemi Badenoch doesn't mean <laughs> it's going to work here. Oh, bit of little local humour. So Ian, as you may have read on the brochure, is a civil barrister. Uh, whilst I deal with fun stuff including blood splatter and DNA and gunshot residue, Ian has the great fun of representing one insurance company against another. <laughs> uh, but is he happy in his much larger houses than mine? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've heard, haven't we, his holy, irreligious approach to Roger the Bishop. <laughs> uh, and we've got to stop that sort of bashing the bishop, don't we? <laughs> when we could have had fun with Roger the police commissioner, as I understand it. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, and I'm very grateful to my source of information for that one. <laughs> so, reasons why you should find for the donors of the bacon. Firstly, one might say that a drip, triple bypass is a warning sign that one shouldn't eat half a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, there is such a thing as being too happy. Do you really want to endanger his cardiac condition? It was 20 years ago. Thirdly, they hide behind false identities. How many of you thought when you heard Mr. and Mrs. Lineker that you were going to turn around and see a crisp salesman? <laughs> <laughs> Fourthly, they appear to have somewhat divergent attitudes to the institution of marriage and the consummation involved in the same. <laughs> Fifthly, the requirement that tea is served even when severely disabled. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, and Miss Stone is very keen, I should mention this, your heretical attitude to when to clap during jazz. <laughs> disqualifies you, we would say. Disqualifies you from winning. And for those reasons, members of the jury, we appeal to you on behalf of the donors of Bacon, not to be generous. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Nye. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. It, it's like with my children. No, we're not having that. You probably haven't brushed your teeth either today. No, no, put that down. What? No. Put no. my script down, but my lord, I need... Miss Nye. Oh, has that... it caught up? <laughs> my lord, I would never blatantly advertise. 
<laughs> I happen to work for the BBC. As we know, that is completely and utterly not allowed. If I was that type of person, I'd have put these... <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> if only I could say I something without giggling. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the last of the trials and the Flitch trials is all about loving each other. It's all about never having that word of saying, I hate you or I wish I wasn't married. Alan and I, I must be honest at times, we could never do this because we have ring, ring rows where we say, when this comes off, we're finished. <laughs> and it's nearly off. It's nearly off. And that's, a, that's our ring rows we have. Uh, uh, and that's it. And we, we haven't done that because we start... Excuse me, just a second, get organised here. Um, and we, that's what we do. And, we, and to hear these lovely, lovely... It just makes me think that love is all around us. And I just wonder if I can take a moment and ask all of you to turn to the person on your right... Roger. Uh, turn to the person on your right <laughs> and say, Hello, how are you? Just take a moment. Just do that. Uh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Hello, how are you? <laughs> How are you? Hello. How oh. Are you? We're doing well. Hello. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> now, turn back to that person on your left and say, mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but love, I mean, it exudes, doesn't it, from this couple. Ladies and gentlemen of our lovely jury, and, you know, you're up a long time now without a drink. So bear with <laughs> us. <laughs> We're getting to the end. Just keep your sympathy going. Because I know when you're young, it's like, for goodness sake, get on with it, that old woman over there. L let me tell you now that Claire Rayner was the mum of Amanda. And Claire Rayner was the first ever agony aunt, wasn't she? She righted more weddings than we'll ever see up here at the Cl Flitch Trials in 900 years. Do, uh, are you agreeing? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing lady. She had a great way with people. It was always, all right, lovey, wasn't it? Lovey. Hello. Oh, all right, lovey. I can sort that out for you. And she did. And I think it's shown that her daughter has followed her footsteps in that she's taken her mother's advice. She's listened to those things. She's allowed her husband to crawl around the bed <laughs> <laughs> with a cup of tea. I know. <laughs> I've, 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 I haven't even had a drink. I, <laughs> I mean, Al, bless him, I found myself a little toy boy. So, you know, he can do... Well, he's three years younger than he thinks I am. Anyway. <laughs> 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 so please be kind in your heart because they've been through it and to adopt a child I just have to say to you I, with all the children in the world that haven't got love I think it's the most wonderful thing to do and you did it because you had difficulties I know but that was meant to be obviously and you adore your little girl and how much would that little girl enjoy a bacon sandwich from the oh. flitch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She would. <laughs> and finally, because I see some of the youngsters are now falling asleep. Um, finally, <laughs> I don't blame you. We're all heading to the Saracen's Head. Um, finally, now I did write actually something down. Um, this is the first time, and I'll, I'll, I'll find, I'll tell you what, I have to actually do it off the top of my head. This is the first time that we would have a claimant who won many years ago, and now a descendant of a claimant standing there who may win. I lay it on your hearts, ladies and gentlemen, the jury. Don't let us down. <laughs> Prove all those people who say the youngsters don't know what they're doing wrong. Do it. Give them the flinch. Oh, well, members of the jury, it's, you're, you're almost finished with your, your duties uh, today. You've done fantastically. And your role is important uh, uh, for us. Uh, the, the Claire Rayner, 
um, Amanda's uh, mother was my was counsel when I first did it back in 1996. It's un unbelievable, you might think, um, how young looking I am and how impossible that is. Uh, <laughs> but she was terrifically supportive to me as a uh, youngster of your age at the time. And so I do have a, a personal sense of, of what, a, what a classy lady she was. But you need to deal with this case on its own merits, because if you're not reassured by Amanda and Colin, then they don't win. But if you are reassured, and it's not just the 17 and a half years of marriage, it's a 30-year uh, relationship, and if you are reassured by the heartbreaking nature of the uh, proposal, and if you are uh, <laughs> reassured uh, by the efforts and the pain and the, uh, of seeking to have children and be prepared to tell strangers here about that and what that does to your relationship that you get through. And if you are reassured, because I thought there was that answer that I didn't like, that I thought that Colin said, it's fine. Because I have that in my household, things are fine. And when that word comes to me, it's never fine. <laughs> Things are really quite serious. Yeah. But actually, I misheard because he said fun. And fun in a relationship and keeping that going is really one of the, you might find, one of the most important things in a relationship. But well, pleased to hear that. <laughs> And if you can then get through those issues and get through being in a mouse, <laughs> one of the most horrible descriptions of mouse infested uh, <laughs> hotel room and uh, continue, uh, then you probably are doing well. The only issue that I have <laughs> is written down here called Mr. and Mrs. Lineker. One of them is called Rainer. And the other one's called Maitland. We never got to the bottom uh, of, of that. I don't think it should be uh, <laughs> held uh, against them for that. And the issue, they've got a, uh, a, a dog there, which they obviously have. I brought my dog. Well, our dogs come down from Yorkshire. Toffee, the, Yorkshire, the, the Cocker Spaniel, in your programmes, came down to win Dunmo's dog show. And yeah, he came down to win. He wouldn't, come, he wouldn't have come five hours to come to for a competition and not win it. And category that he was entered into, the dog you would most want to take home. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't win it. <laughs> local, local Dunmo justice. There'll be some Dunmo dogs won it. <laughs> We've got to take him home now. <laughs> so we're upset about that, but it's not necessarily on the point uh, of uh, one. <laughs> one of the things when you've got an opportunity in the platform, you should certainly use it. In, in my, in my view, <laughs> very upset because he's lost a number of uh, competitions that has old Toffee. I don't know if Toffee's there. We can bring, bring, bring him in. So, Toffee, hey! go, where's Toffee? Oh, it's Toffee's not coming. Oh. We're going to see if we can show you Toffee before we, we finish this. You. You won't be guided by me because you haven't listened to a word I've said all day, so I should stop. I should stop, but it would be lovely to finish this off in the correct way. Uh, so in a moment, I am going to ask uh, you to retire to consider your verdict. All right. Call the jury keepers. Oh, they're coming the other way this time. <laughs> Raise your right hand, and you're going to do it on your own. This, they put that down. He's got paper. We've got work this time. Thank you very much. We're taking over. Thank you. I do make solemn oath to this court that I will well and truly convey this jury to a place of safety, where they may consider without let or hindrance, <laughs> and that I shall defend them and keep them from all interference. Process of yeah, more practice required, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, let's go.
All rise. Let's go. Oh, I knew it had happened at some point. <laughs> Sorry. If you knew it would happen, why did you do it? <laughs> good answer, though. Was good it good answer. answer? Great answer. <laughs> Don't have a go at me. I lent you my pen earlier. We have a verdict. We thank you. <laughs> Always grateful for that. Um, do we have a verdict? Uh, will the uh, foreman please rise? Thank you. Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? Correct. <laughs> Would it not be a good time to do the raffle? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still standing. <laughs> Prolong the agony. <laughs> oh, here it comes. You're going to have a spin without opening it up this time? Can you do that probably? <laughs> Where's he gone? Oh, there he is. Yeah. <coughs> How many colours? We've got lots of colours today, have we? Pink can't be. Oh. Anyone got a pink ticket? Uh, unlucky. <laughs> 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 so it's a green ticket. 138. 138. On the green. Hey. Where is it? Up the back. No. no one want it? No, they're coming. Right at the back. Right at the back. Obviously. Oh, yes. Now, these events don't plan themselves. So there is an exceptionally busy committee that organises this. And I think now all the committee are going to come up and have a group photograph taken. Before we do that, His Majesty's Deputy Lieutenant, High Sheriff of Essex, Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner, Chairman of Ottlesford District Council and Mayor of Great Dunmo, ladies and gentlemen, could I please invite the High Sheriff of Essex to the stage? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Your Honour. As High Sheriff of Essex, uh, I, uh, a role that has been going for a thousand years. <laughs> oh. I just thought I'd mention it. He, he hasn't been in it all that time. <laughs> I have the power to be able to bestow an award. Now, as it was pointed out just a moment ago, it is, it, these events don't just happen on their own. These take months of planning, of committee meetings, cajoling and hard work behind the scenes. I think it'd be fair to say that you've all had a pretty good time. Yeah. And so, and this will be a bit of a surprise, I think, but Mark Jones, I wonder if you might 
come to the stage. Now, Mark, uh, 32 years you've been at this, haven't you? I was a bit younger when I started. Well, this is the High Sheriff's Award in recognition of great and valuable services to the community, oh. which is for you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, 32 years ago, I think probably I was still this high at that stage. So. Um, but what I would say is over those 32 years, what this event does show you is the value of teamwork. In all honesty, my committee have made my life easy this time. Every time you ask them to do something, I never get the answer no. We always find ways to find it. And even this last day or two, you can imagine, there's a few stressful things that occur at times. Um, but always we find solutions from the people doing the streaming, the television, uh, uh, the bearers, everybody. And actually, you people here, you know, we do all this work and we really do depend on you delivering. Every member of the team depends on everybody else. And can I say thank you very much for all you've done and thank you for what you've done for today. And thank you everybody for this. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in four years' time. Possibly. 2028. Oh, but oh, Helen, I must say thank you very much. For, you oh, know, and that's fantastic. I'll put that on the uh, thing. Well, I know, but, but no, Sheriff, thank you very much. And, uh, well, that's a privilege and honour. Thank you very much. Hey! I think you, you always know when you've given the award to the right person when they spend all their time thanking somebody else. Ah. <laughs> Could I have the rest of the committee on stage, please? Pink shirts, this is your moment. We will come to you. <laughs> oh, we're fine. This is important. <coughs> we won't worry about the verdict. Just <coughs> 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 Just tap him on the shoulder and ask him if we should get out of the way of the sofa. Emma! No, 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 you'll be all right. They, they can see you then, can't they? I've not seen Martin. That's all right. No, you asked me to do it. You'll be all right. I was hoping to talk to him about kitchen. Modern technology, they'll crop you out of it. You're all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so well. Would you like to continue now, my lord? Well done. There we go. Do I look like I can? I'm so sure we should be with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that concludes the trials this year. We'll see you in 2028. Mr. Court Clerk, we do have a verdict. Have we? Oh, right. Right, yeah, keep the water over there. Thank you. Uh, Would the foreman rise again, please? <laughs> Sorry, you must be whacked out by now. <laughs> the alcohol. Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict?
Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, that was going to be a unanimous thing. But. Okay. How say you, for the claimants or for the donors of the bacon? We, the jury, are. Drum roll, everyone, please. <laughs> we are in favour of the claimants. Yay! Congratulations, guys. We all want to do a big shout-out to Helen as well. So can we all give a big round of applause again for Helen for bringing us all together? Thank you so much. I don't know where you are. I'm a bit blind, but wherever you are. And also, one more thing. I won't talk for too long because I'm not very good at talking, but... I also want to give a big shout out to a specific member of the committee, um, my good friend and neighbor, Alan. Don't know where you are. He's the cameraman today. Hey. Alan, Alan. You're a great man. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. You were, you're, hey. you're, you're slightly big up your part. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> could, have, could have got a song in there. A popular, well. a popular uh, uh, verdict there. By the verdict of the jury, According to ancient custom, you have been a judge worthy to take the prescribed oath and receive the much coveted award of a whole flitch of bacon. The order of this court is that you be taken to a public place where you will be required to take the said oath, kneeling the while on pointed stones. This done, it will give me much pleasure to pass sentence on you. Thank you, Your Honour. <laughs> the court will proceed and will retire to form solemn procession alongside the folks hall and thence proceed to the place of sentence, our ancient and respected marketplace. Mr. Usher, we'll call close. our honorable constable of police. We'll to have be the present. closing prayer first, shall we? <laughs> it's been a long time. Be before that, we'll have the closing prayer. <laughs> Let us pray. In Austin, Texas, there is a famous phrase. Keep Austin weird, they say. But Austin, your game you'll have to raise to compete with Dumbo today. <laughs> but amidst this madness, dear Lord Jesus, as we do our duties dutifully, as God looks down from heaven and sees us, May he bless us beautifully. And God, you are our celestial agony aunt. Like the blessed Claire Rayner. Help us to change what we can, accept what we can't, and make life's madness a bit saner. Amen. 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 Shall I call the village constable if you can it's still alive? Is he? <laughs> I don't know why we have him. That's been. Constable, it's been a long day, but will you please clear <laughs> will you please clear the King's Highway and make it safe for the orderly passage of this court to our ancient marketplace? I dread that. Right? Yeah. Uh, I will, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey. <laughs> Did you carry that?
Thank you for taking much of this time in the last one. Right, you guys got two couples going in the chair, haven't we? Right. Better find the other ones as well. to go along on your knees if you wish to, but uh, you could... Uh Never in doubt. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lineker, you shall swear by custom of confession that you ne'er made mutual transgression, nor since you were married man and wife, by household brawls or contentious strife, or otherwise at bed or at board, offended each other in deed or word, or in a twelve month and a day, repented not in thought any way, or since the parish clerk said, Amen, wished yourselves unmarried again, but continue true and in desire, as when you joined hands in holy choir. I swear. I swear. Oh. Oh. Since to the conditions without all fear, of your own accord you do freely swear, a whole flitch of bacon you shall receive and bear it hence with love and good leave. But remember, one final time, it'll be the bacon's your own. <laughs> For this is our custom at Dunmo well known. Come on, boys. Though the pleasure be ours, yeah! the bacon's your own! 